Hey everyone, I hope you're doing what you can to stay inside and help flatten out the curve. It's a great time to be reading right now, so uh, I hope you've picked up that book that maybe you've been putting off for a while. Today's monologue comes from a book called Sphere by Michael Crichton. For those of you who don't recognize the name, Michael Crichton wrote the popular science fiction novels Jurassic Park and The Andromeda Strain. Sphere is also a science fiction novel. It's not as popular as those other two, I think partly because of the film adaptation. It wasn't received very well by critics, and it didn't do so well at the box office. I haven't seen it, so I can't really speak to it. The book was received very well, and rightly so. It's a, it's a super digestible science fiction sort of psychological thriller. Um, this book owned my life for an entire day. I read it in one sitting, which isn't that hard to do, mostly because reading a book like Sphere is sort of the literary equivalent of binge watching a TV show on Netflix. Um, a little context about the monologue. The premise of Sphere is that a, a, an unidentified spacecraft is found at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and a team of specialists is put together and sent down to an underwater habitat to investigate it. The protagonist of the novel is the psychologist on that team, uh, Dr. Norman Johnson, and he delivers this monologue when the team realizes that what they're dealing with might be an alien life form and how that alien life form functions might be beyond their imagination. So check it out. <laughs> you see, at first I thought the anthropomorphic problem, uh, the fact that we can only conceive of extraterrestrial life as basically human, well, I thought it was a failure of imagination. Man is man. All he knows is man, and all he can think of is what he knows. But as you can see, that isn't true. And we can think of plenty of other things but we don't, so there must be another reason why we can only conceive of extraterrestrial life as human. And I think the answer is that we are, in reality, terribly frail animals. And we don't like being reminded of how frail we are, how delicate the balances are inside our own bodies, how short our stay is on Earth, and how easily it has ended. So. We imagine other life forms as being like us so that we don't have to think of the real threat, the terrifying threat that they may represent without ever intending to. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you should definitely check out this book. It's a super fun read. It's very fast. There's a link to buy it down in the description. Happy reading.